So something very retro that I've been thinking a lot about recently is is something about how we used to play games back in the day before the ages of the internet. Games back in the old days in the 8-bit, the 16-bit, all the way up to the 32-bit, those games were pretty tough, especially in the 8-bit era as well. And most of that time during the very early days, it was usually because games were just badly designed or localized poorly. Things like Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, which was legendary for the cryptic riddles that made absolutely no sense once they were translated to English. Um, so those sort of tips were like couldn't tell you anything to do with the game. Um, some of the things that that game expected you to do with no information um, from the game itself was ap absolutely ridiculous. And that's just a prime example. There were so many games back in the day that were just ridiculously, obtusely difficult. Um, but, you know, without the internet, we got stuck. Um, and I guess what I've been thinking about is sort of how different it is back to those days when, you know, how did we get help back when we were absolutely stuck on a game? Um, when you were thinking of things like, you know, video game magazines probably becomes um, the very sort of, um, the standout sort of example of how we got help. You know, everyone used to buy sort of video game magazines back when those were popular. And that was the only way you could get any sort of information about any game. But the problem is, was there were a couple of situations where sometimes the printed information in magazines was wrong. And there was no way to actually check if some cheats were real. So. Going back to a Castlevania example, there's um, Simon Belmont was allegedly playable in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game on the NES, by inputting the Konami code, which was absolutely bullshit. But loads of magazines, like one magazine printed out, probably in America, and then lots of other magazines started sort of reprinting that same incorrect information. I definitely saw it in a Games Master cheat book at one point, and it was absolute rubbish. I spent ages trying to put that code in, didn't work, but how do you know that it wasn't real? Because as far as you were concerned, if it was in a magazine, it was gospel. Um, and then you had all the strategy guides. Some came with magazines, some you could buy separately. And you, you, know, you can still get those strategy guides today. Um, but what I found was, um, you know, the person that had the strategy guides in the magazines was the source of all power when it came to gaming conversation in the kids' playgrounds. You know, that was the person you used to sort of speak to about how to do this, how to do that. Um, and in my school, when I was growing up, that guy was me. It got so bad at some times when kids would actually knock at my door randomly asking for cheats. Even school bullies who would bully me during the day, they would come to my house in the evening and ask for help for things. Um, they'd never you know, chat to me or try and befriend me in other ways, they would just sort of just ask for cheats. That was what I was there for, I was the human cheat book. Um, I guess I probably am in, in some ways, um, but it was ridiculous. And then you've got things like going further beyond that to speak to a person who in the know, you'd actually have to phone game hotline. So, you know, for a premium rate phone call, um, you'd have to, you know, you could, you could actually chat to someone and get a bit of help. Nintendo had their own official helpline in the in the UK and in the in the US, um, you know, and you'd phone up this number and you know, tell the guy your problem and hopefully he'd be able to help you and hopefully it wouldn't take so many minutes that uh, your phone bill would be absolutely massive. I remember so many times sort of phone, asking my parents for permission to phone that number, especially during the 16-bit era. One game in particular I absolutely struggled on, and that was Secret of Mana, which is one of my favorite games of all time. There was a particular bit that springs to mind in Secret of Mana, and it's quite infamous, where there's a, a bit where you're taken to this sort of um, land, um, and you, sort of the only riddle you, it's like a Lost World, Lost Woods style thing where you have to go through um, level, uh, you know, areas in a certain order to unlock the next bit. And the riddle was, walk the seasons, spring to winter, spring again, and then we can enter. Um, and I couldn't figure that out. I mean, you know, I'm an older person now, I'd probably be able to figure that out in five seconds, but when I was in my sort of early teens, I just couldn't figure it out. So I had to, you know, phone up the Nintendo hotline and figure things out. And it was just like, I'd have to you know, pay more money to, to, you know, to, to actually get information about things. And if all that didn't help and you were really struggling, there was always the cheat cartridges, your game genies, your action replays and things like that. And they've mostly gone, although you can get those sort of code breaker things by the makers of, um, of action replay. Um, and you know, they're, yeah, they're still around them, but back in the day, you know, the game genie, the action replay, those were the things you used to blow your games open wide um, or even you know, make your games harder or more ridiculous. Although I do remember one occasion when you would, um, for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES, there was one code for invincibility where if you hit a spike, 
you know, that was it. It basically sort of crashed your game, which was really frustrating when you got to sort of near the end and you accidentally went into a, a spike or a bit of fire. I can't remember what it was. Um, you know, I remember um, uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day again on the NES. Um, it was a similar situation where you know you put a particular cheat in for invincibility and you get all the way most of the way through the game and somehow it just crashed. Um, but you know, thinking about all that stuff, then how the internet changed everything. No longer do we have to spend money or time trying to find help for things. Um, you know, you could just look up game facts, um, and, you know, websites of full strategy guides. These days, you can even look on on YouTube and find out exactly how to do things. If you're really fed up with the game, you can even go on YouTube and watch someone play the game for you um, to the very end and watch the ending without any sort of effort, just watching things uh, you know, on, on your phone or your, or your PC. Um, you know, it's changed everything in the internet. It's it cheats and answers to your questions is just a few clicks away. And even if you need help by an actual human person, you, know, you can send them a message, you can go to forums and things. You know, it's just absolutely mad how things have changed. Um, for the better, yeah, I, I guess, but I kind of miss that old way of finding these sort of really old ways of doing things, and I, I miss that a sort of uh, playground mentality of trying to figure out things as a group and, and asking this person, well, I, I don't know, but this person might know, and sort of going around the playground trying to find out the answer to a, a relatively simple gaming question. So yeah, that's just a few thoughts on something very, very retro, um, and this week, I want to hear about the times that you were utterly stuck in a video game and what you did to get past this insurmountable barrier. Um, I'm going to be back very soon with another video as usual, so please do take a couple of seconds to, to like, share uh, and some subscribe to this channel as well because it really does make or break the success of Pugcooth Gaming. Uh, come and follow me on Twitter at Pugcooth Gaming. I would just love to interact with more of you because not enough of you, you guys sort of ask you know, talk to me and and tell me how you feel about some of these videos so please do let me know um, either on twitter or in the comments other than that thank you very much for watching i'll be back soon and happy gaming